Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. In today's video, we're going to use Wireshark to look at an A calls B, A puts B on hold, call flow, and analyze what happens when you put a SIP call on hold. We will be using our SIP test bed we built in video number 65 for this testing. I will also show you how to identify the SIP transactions and SIP dialog to help analyze our SIP call. Finally, we will dig into the SDP to see how phone A puts phone B on hold. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on here. I've pulled up the Wireshark trace for our call on hold test, or our call hold test, I should say. And let's look at the call flow real quick. So you go under uh, telephony, uh, VoIP calls, and here you can see the, uh, this is, if there is multiple calls in this uh, trace, you would see multiple lines. But since we just have a single call or a single session, there's only one line here. So we're gonna highlight this guy and look at the flow sequence, okay? So let me see if I can make this a little bigger here. Well, it's not that much bigger, <laughs> but it's okay. So um, 192.168.1.44 is um, phone A. 192.168.1.46 is phone B, okay? So we'll just, uh, we'll start from the beginning. So the first message is an invite with SDP, and it's listing all the different codecs <laughs> that the phone supports. And here's a little comments on the side. So phone A is sending an invite to um, 46, phone B, right? And you can see the arrow kind of going to the right. And then phone B sends a 100 trying. And the 100 trying, and I'm sure I've, ex I've said this before, it, it's just a receipt saying, yes, I got your invite, okay? And then it sends a ringing saying, okay, now I'm notifying the, well, I'm ringing the phone basically, and, and so it's ringing. And then as soon as phone B uh, answers the phone, it sends a 200 okay, all right? And then phone A acts the uh, 200 okay. And you'll see this 200 okay uh, has an SDP and he's, he's saying, okay, I wanna use a G711 MULAW, right? And we could dig around into the, into the traces of this, but I, I don't really think we need to. This is just looking at the call flow. We'll look at the, um, the call hold here in a second. Okay, so the act comes back from A and so now we have established a phone call, all right? And, uh, and this is what you would call a session, right? Because it's using SDP uh, to establish the, the media. All right, and SDP is Session Description Protocol. So uh, so once B says, okay, we're gonna use G711 MULAW, that's on the list of A, you can see it's the first one listed right there. And so now they're both using, um, you can see these. this is two one-way paths, you know, from A to B and from B to A. All right, and they're both using G711 MULAW. And a phone will not split them. So it won't do a G711 MULAW one way and G729 uh, the other way. If they can't agree on a codec, it just fails the call. Agree on a codec meaning the same codec, right? <laughs> okay, so what do we have here? We have, we're in dialogue, okay? And we've, ha we've had a one whole transaction. And we can go look at that real quick because this is important to keep the terminology straight, uh, especially when you're talking to other <laughs> engineers, right? So we're going to uh, look at this real quick. We're going to go on the message header. Here's our, uh, this branch ID right here, uh, lists the transaction. That's the, actually the transaction ID. If you remember from the last video, this tag ID combined with the call ID, well, let me start over again. The tag, the from tag ID, the to tag ID, and the call ID all compose the dialogue ID. Those three things are determines a single dialogue, okay? Hopefully you're still following, going along with me. I'm just going to scroll down here and we're going to keep an eye on this this branch ID, which is actually the transaction. It, branch is an old term, so we're, I'm going to call it transaction ID. Okay, so here we go. So here's uh, oops, the 100 trying. Um, 17E9 is the last four digits. Yep, they both match. 
Here's the ringing. So, yep. 200 okay. Yep. And ACK. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. The ACK is actually a, a new transaction, even though it's its own transaction. <laughs> it's, it's just ACKing the 200 okay. Okay, so just to be clear, um, since I kind of screwed that up when I was talking to you, from here to the media, the, these two are actually media. This isn't part of the SIP protocol, but from the one from the invite to the ACK is actually two transactions inside one dialogue. Okay, and that's just up to the ACK so far. From this invite to this 200 OK is one transaction, and this ACK is its own transaction. All right, and that's the end of the transaction. So the next message we get will have its own transaction ID, but it'll still be in the same dialogue. So we had two transactions, right? Uh, the invite through the 200 OK is one transaction. ACK is a second transaction. They're all in the same dialogue. And we're, we can look at that. So remember I was saying that the, the dialogue consists of the from tag, the to tag, and the call ID, right? So you notice there's no to tag here. That tag has to come from phone B, and this is the initial invite. So you'll see, okay, on the 100 trying that he got from phone B, phone B hat didn't send the tag because it's basically just a receipt saying, I got your invite, but I haven't done anything with it, <laughs> right? I haven't processed it yet. But then, you know, um, gosh, what is it? Um, a nanosecond later or something <laughs> like that. He sends a 180 ringing. At this point, he attaches the tag ID to the two header. Okay, so now we have a dialogue. We've got the from tag, the to tag, and the uh, call ID right here. Okay, so that's our, that's our dialogue ID. So now what's going to happen is, is this invite right here is when I pushed hold on phone A. You'll see phone A here sent another invite with an SDP uh, to phone B, which is dot 46, right? Now, if we look at that, well, first let's look at, okay, so he's definitely in a different uh, transaction, right, from the previous one or the previous two. So he's, this is a brand new transaction. It's uh, the exact same tags. So it's, it's, in, it's in dialogue and he is sending an invite and you'll notice nothing else, right? And there's nothing in here that says hold. And that's because the hold is in the SDP down here. And if we come down here and look at this, we'll see that the session connection information. Okay, yeah, so there's a couple different ways you can <laughs> put a call on hold. And one is to, uh, you can do this media attribute where he's saying send only is that he's only going to be sending RTP. He is not going to be uh, receiving RTP, right? This is phone A send, telling phone B this, right? <laughs> and another way of doing it, this is his connection. He basically, he basically is telling phone B, if you're going to send me RTP packet, send it to this address, which is 0.0.0.0. .0 and that's basically uh, null in the SIP world or SDP world. So he's basically saying, send all your RTP to null if, if you send me any RTP at all, right? This is how you change the, the RTP IP address, okay? So then phone B turns around and says, okay, no problem. And we'll see that it's in the same dialogue. Oops, okay, so uh, 21F0, yep, 21F0, tags are the same, call ID is the same. And his SDP is saying, yeah, no problem. Here's his connection information. He still, he's, he didn't change his IP address, but he's going into receive only mode. So he's telling phone A, okay, I'm just going to go into receive only mode. And then phone A, uh, after getting the 200 OK, sends an act back. And, and I'd have to look in the spec. I'm not exactly sure he's required to send an act back on a in dialogue invite because that's like sending a. Um, let me back up a little bit. Phone A could send phone B invites all day long, and phone B will just respond with 200 OK. And it's not to set up new calls. It, it, he could be just trying to. Um, we'll put a call on hold as a good example, <laughs> or uh, you know, like keep alive. You know, he's just keeping the session alive. There's other ways to do it besides sending invites, but some phones do send them invites. 
And uh, that's usually if the other end doesn't support like notify or something like that or option messages. Yeah, that's why I'm kind of wondering if phone A actually needed to send the act back. It doesn't hurt, right? It's a, of course, it's going to be a new transaction since it's an act. So 21F0 is our transaction ID for the invite. I'm sorry, for the hold. And then the ACK is its own uh, transaction ID. Okay, so time goes on. You know, we put the call on hold for, I don't know, what is that? A couple seconds, it looks like. <laughs> and then we took phone A off of hold. And that's what this other invite is. So now phone A sends another invite to phone B. And this is, of course, a new transaction ID. Everything. This is still the same dialogue. See, this invite here and uh, this invite up here are exact same 12C7. So we're still in the same dialogue, but this time he's saying, where is it? Okay, well, he fixed his, uh, his, his IP address, so he's saying, yeah, send RTP to dot .44, which is good. And, uh, and now he's going into send receive mode. All right, so now he's expecting to receive RTP from phone B. And phone B says, okie dokie, and sends back his 200 OK with send receive in, this, in the SDP, right? And then phone A sends another act back, which I still don't think needs to be there, but I'm not going to go look in the spec to figure it out. And then uh, at the end, you know, we just hung up phone A. So phone A sends a buyout, and that's going to be in its own transaction ID. You see he's got a different transaction ID from the previous ones. So it's a separate transaction. Of course, the tag is the same dialogue, so the tags and everything are the same. And... Um, Says why he says I'm going on hook. <laughs> I'm hanging up now, and uh, so goodbye. And phone B responds with 200 OK. See ya, and that's it. Okay, so you can see in this call we had uh, let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different transactions in this one uh, dialogue or one phone call, and that'll change when we start. When we have multiple dialogue calls, which will be if we put someone on hold and then initiate another call for like call transfer or something like that. And we'll get to that in the next video. Okay, so to get back to our uh, SIP call flow here. So we um, we looked at what happened up to we, um, to we had our RTP or our media set, set up. Okay, then, then we had this invite from phone A, which is .44 to, to phone B right, which is dot .46, where he's putting the call on hold, right? And we get the 200 OK back from phone B. I don't know why he said G7 on a new telephony event, but anyway, um, <laughs> we got an ACK from phone A, right, from the 200 OK. And then when we took the call off hold, we got another invite uh, from phone A, uh, basically saying, I'm taking the call off hold. We're going to go into send receive mode. Phone B sends back 200 OK. And as you'll see, the um, leg of the media path is set up from phone B. We get the ACK, which is kind of, this trace is, is kind of funny the way that they have it set it up. But anyway, um, this, uh, this ACK right here is for this 200 OK right here. And here's the, uh, the media from A, right? And of course, then we have the buy and the 200 OK at the end. This is where phone A hangs up and he says, okay. So, um, yeah, if you noticed, um, it was actually in, uh, if you remember when, when we sent this uh, invite with SDP, it was a, a send only and then a receive only, right? So you would think there would still be uh, one path set up, but there's not. There's, there's no media. And we can, go, we can go check that real quick by looking at the RTP and our SIP trace right here. So, okay, here's our initial invite. Here's an invite to put on hold, put the call on hold, and here's a 200 OK. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put SIP or RTP. And as you can see, here's our 200 OK. Here's our ACK. And you can see between until we get this other <laughs> invite right here, there is zero media. And you think there would be one way, but media, but there, but there is not. And the reason why there isn't is because there's no reason for the phone to send media if... <laughs> He's not going to be listening to anything, right? But uh, theoretically, it would be one-way media. So, uh, like, if you got that from a server, right? And let's say you wanted music on hold. Well, at this point, that, that's where that send-only, receive-only comes in is, is 
it'll start playing music <laughs> or something, right? So the person on hold hears, you know, the elevator music. And so they're, but that's only, so the phone B is, is listening to the elevator music and phone A is, is sending it, right? Or, or the, or the, the PBX or the, or the proxy, right? But in this case, they're not, phone A isn't sending anything. So there's no RTP. And then here's the invite taking the, the, the phone call off hold. I'm sorry, taking the SIP call off a hold. And here's the 200 OK. And here's phone B sending, starting to stream its RTP. Here's that act that came in a little bit later. And, um, and that's it. Don't forget, you can support the network engineering video blog by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. That helps. And hit the subscribe button. That really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.